Oh yeah, brothers, what's up? Bucket hats on, you know what that means. It's time to talk some wrestling. <laughs> Maybe you don't. Maybe you don't know that. I uh, recently have been getting into watching professional wrestling. I was not into it previously, but I've really been watching it a lot more regularly. In fact, I did a vlog over on the Button Mappers where I kind of talked about my WWE journey. I didn't even know at the time that I probably wasn't even using WWE correctly. I wasn't even aware at that point what networks were involved, what was the role of WWE, and I still have very much a newcomer's lens when looking at wrestling, because I don't really know anything about it. So if you want to see where I've come from, you can check out that video, and you can subscribe! I actually want to do a little talk on a couple of WrestleManias uh, next time. But for today, my purpose is more so to tell you about what I've learned as a newcomer to professional wrestling. And this isn't going to be the type of video where I'm like doing more of the like urban dictionary style, like what is a mark? What is a, a heel? No, I'm more so just talking about concepts. Because there are things that I would say I had misunderstandings about and maybe still do, and that I am developing an understanding for. So the first thing that I think about when I think of what I used to think of wrestling, and what I mean I still am coming to terms with, is the idea of it being fake. And it 100% is and isn't. And I want to explain that a little bit. So I think we all know at this point that wrestling matches are scripted, they're predetermined, and even choreographed in some instances. And that is where the, the fakeness comes in. However, it does not take away from the gravity of the matches. We are still having a violent sport, and a lot of times what you see in the ring can be or have real world repercussions. And I think that that point gets lost when you say that wrestling is fake, especially for somebody who doesn't really know the sport that well. You know, I've, I've seen in the limited time that I've watched people constantly being referenced as recovering from an injury or coming back from the hospital. And, you know, while part of that can play into their storylines, a lot of that is based on what happens in the ring. I've heard stories about people who've passed away as a result of damage that they've taken in the ring. And in the very odd exception, people who have died in the ring. So I'm still learning about some of those instances, but you know, the things that they do in the ring are where it gets pretty, uh, Intense, I guess I would say. And I think that is kind of the appeal to me. It's kind of where I go into the next thing that I think I've learned about wrestling, which is more so the art of it. What makes wrestling entertaining and artistic? And there's many factors, but to boil it down to a very simple level, I would say it's storylines, character development, and technical prowess. How skilled are the wrestlers in the ring? And that's what I think is the most impressive to me and the reason I am interested in it in the first place is I want to see what the wrestlers are technically capable of. I wasn't aware of how diverse the move sets were in professional wrestling like what kind of moves could be executed. And so I'm always like kind of like open-eyed when I'm seeing guys get suplexed behind their back or they pick them up under the leg and then they body slam them or they jump on top of the turnbuckle and then they go for the elbow drop or the you know Hulk Hogan signature leg drop. <laughs> There's so many cool moves that are associated with wrestling and that's where I think it breaches the suspension of disbelief. That's when I see it and I go like, oh, that's why this is professional wrestling. And it's not always, like I think that, you know, and I understand that they have to offset it a lot of times, 
you know, the, the line of disbelief simply because of injuries and sustaining these guys' longevity, especially with what they learned over the years and how to keep the business profitable. And you'll see things like brawler matches where that's where it begins to be like, okay, and then they just go like, huh, 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 huh. like, you know, that's not how you throw a punch. Or they do like karate chops or slaps. And it's, why am I watching wrestling for a slap fight? And that's when I start to go like, I don't know. But if I'm talking technical prowess, like what, who are some of the wrestlers I've been really impressed by? I have a couple of them here. Uh, I would say that I really like watching the Undertaker matches. Not only is he kind of like a giant, like, you know, um, mortician, I guess. I don't know the right phrase or word. Uh, but like when you, you see him do a lot of like pickups and body slams and choke slams and pick them up and drop them. So I've, I, uh, I, some of the best matches I saw early on were Undertaker matches. And I think that continued. I really have grown to appreciate Mick Foley. I think that uh, his, even though he is somewhat of the punching bag, I do think that he has some moves up his sleeves. And I think some of the ones I'm really impressed by are the ones where he's fighting some lesser skilled wrestlers. And, uh, I, you know, he just keeps going too, man. This guy's got stamina, like, he, and he's surviving a lot of those difficult blows as well. So I, I like the uh, the dude love matches and mankind. Cactus Jack, I don't really know as well. But uh, of the, the two former, I, I really appreciate Mick Foley. And even though, you know, of the era that I'm watching him, he does seem a little broken from, like, even as early as WrestleMania 1, I do really like watching Hulk Hogan. I do think that he has some some skills and some tricks up his sleeves and uh, he's not afraid to use them. Although maybe he is at a couple points because you could tell he's done some damage to himself. The wrestlers who I'm, maybe I'm watching the wrong era. I will chalk it up to that. I am open-minded and think that I will probably see better matches of them if I continue going in order. But the ones I've just not really seen that from that I want to see it from are Stone Cold and The Rock. So with Stone Cold, his is like he he does more brawling and i i have seen him pick some people up but it's it, he must have been injured in like 97 98 and so a, a lot of that that i was seeing it, i just don't feel like it's peak stone cold it's peak stone cold in terms of the like audience retention but i just as far as the technic technical skills i i don't i have not seen that yet so I, I am waiting to see an era of like impressive stone cold wrestling. And please use the comments to tell me, to culture me. Again, I'm the newcomer here, so you know. And then The Rock, you know, I, I, I am seeing him as Rocky Malvia, my via, I don't know the last name, but The Rock, you know, before he was The Rock. And um, he's good, but he's like a showman, you know, more so than I think he is. Uh, I've seen him do a couple body slams, but it, it does seem like he's not really, busting out the same moves I had mentioned from the former guys. So I, I hope to see more of that from The Rock and what he's cooking. But one more I should mention, and he'll be important for reference in a minute, is Rob Van Dam. Very skilled technically. The guy goes on top of the turnbuckle and he does kind of like a backflip and drops his legs on the guys. Like, whoa, where is that coming from? So this guy's, I think, and what that's showing me too, because I am going from like the 80s onward. I'm sporadic. I'm just watching anything and everything. Like, but I, I am, I am doing a WrestleMania chronological watch. And then I'm like, I had a 90s playlist I watched and I, I watched some stuff with Spencer. And, and so I watched some odd matches here and there. But what that shows me is the evolution of the style of wrestling over time and how it, it, you know, what wrestling looked like changed over time. And so that is pretty cool to see and have that point of comparison. Now, the technical skills are one thing. I, I will say that. And that's the thing I... I kind of look for when I, I watch a match is when you have crossed the line because you're either on two sides of the coin, right? It's you're either, you know, it's either theater or it's rest, like it's athleticism, I guess I would say. And so there's like a, a happy medium you have to reach to keep me like interested and engaged. The theater part comes from more of like the star power stuff, the character development, 
the storylines that go with these guys and watching them even as early as the 80s the cosplay themes are terrific man these guys are dressed up and they have these whole character concepts very creative uh, at the same time in some of those earlier days you could tell they're really experimenting with anything even in the 90s they're they're really leaning into um <laughs> even some ethnicity identities and so that's pretty interesting i mean but even in the 80s you got rowdy roddy piper and um who else do you have iron chic and some of this is a little cringe but you know it comes with the territory i'm i'm comfortable putting that to the side whatever i think that you need to have a strong character concept also in order to make it like kind of like you're a matches and like you're wrestling iconic so Rob Van Dam, as much as like this guy's amazing, very skilled technically, I just don't think he has the same kind of star power that a lot of other wrestlers I mentioned do. What's his thing? He looks like a California dude and he, I guess he came off of ECW, great. But he looks like, you know, he's just got the, the hairstyle of this, the smack talking. It's not, it's, it's, I, maybe I haven't seen en enough, but it does not compare to the likes of The Rock or Hulk Hogan. Uh, I think that like, <laughs> I'm, I'm really impressed when I, like, I see the character, like if, if they have some kind of like, how do I say this? Like their look, they have to have the look down. They have to have the gestures down. I mean, even their theme song, having a theme song that you walk out to, not all of them are granted that, but like Hulk, Hogan coming out to I am a real American. And then he's got his like. Uh, let's see if I can do it. <laughs> he's got, like, there's more to it, but man, it, it, you just know he's going to bust that out. And that's what the crowd kind of comes there for. So you can't help but do it in unison with him. You know, like the bodybuilding poses and even the, like the eyes, the bulging eyes, man. So iconic. And that's, I, I, I do kind of look forward to that as well. And you know, I'm mentioning some of these stars too, but like th there is the element of like a villain that stands out to you as well. I watched the first three WrestleManias. King Kong Bundy has a very strong presence in all three of them and like concepts behind his matches that I think stands out. For instance, WrestleMania 1, what does he do? He he uh, pins down the guy in seven seconds. He set a world record. In, and what does that mean in a, a sport where everything is fake? I don't know. But seeing that, seeing him <laughs> body slam the guy into the turnbuckle, falls down and puts him, pins him down in seven seconds. He comes out with a menacing laugh. <laughs> this guy is not to be messed with. And so I, I can appreciate a good villain as well. And, you know, when it comes to the storylines as well, I do think that, like, the build-up, like, even the concepts of, like, title matches, like, you know, what's, what does this mean for this person? Sometimes they do some things, like, they do, like, money matches or, you know, they, there's some kind of gamble. Oh, we're going to shave the, the loser's head. <laughs> like, that, that's fine and all. Um, but I do think some of the more deep-seated stuff is cool, too. I really like when uh, Mankind is, like, like trying out to be Stone Cold's tag team partner and he goes through all these matches and Stone Cold's just like, I'm good. <laughs> but then at the same time, he comes and then beats up the guys who are pinning him down. And then, you know, also in terms of the art and the creativity, I do appreciate some of the very creative matches, the Hell in the Cell, the, you know, bury them alive, put them in a casket type of matches. Like the, there's some really creative stuff going on there too. So these are a couple of things that I have learned as somebody who is getting into the sport. What do you think? What have you uh, learned or thought about wrestling? What do you think about my takeaways? And please, by all means, educate me. But this video is for fun. Thanks for watching. And again, stay tuned. I want to do a breakdown of uh, maybe some highlights and thoughts about WrestleManias one through three. A lot of people have been giving me flack for watching from that era, but I noticed they're like people in equivalent age to me. I do think some of the older generation maybe appreciates that era a little more, but uh, you know, we'll, we'll talk about it. Cheers. Have a great weekend, everybody, and talk to you soon.